in order to create dashboards with data Zen, you will need the data Zen publisher Windows 8 app, which is available for free from the Windows Store. Once inside the app, from the bottom menu, you can select create. And you can create a dashboard from any existing dashboard as a template or start from an empty design surface. Uh, this is the data in designer and here we go through a few steps like creating the layout, connecting to data, setting some dashboard properties and finally publishing our dashboard. Uh, this here is the design surface and on the left hand side we have all the controls we can use uh, to create our dashboard. We have some navigators, gauges, uh, charts, maps and data grids. And the idea here is that you can just take any of these controls, drag it to the design surface, resize it to the size you want it to be, and DataZen will take care of making sure everything looks good in the space you give it. You don't have to worry about the visuals, we'll always render the appropriate visuals in the space provided. Uh, once, uh, uh, once you have a control here, on the bottom you can set some visual properties, like give it a title, subtitle, uh, this is a gauge, so you can choose the number format used by the gauge, uh, some range stops, as well as uh, whether higher or lower, lower values are better. And basically this is the case for all of our controls. I'll take a comparison time chart, put it here, and again, the, the visual properties are the type of visualization, the number format, what's the data expected data structure, and so on. So I mentioned that we have uh, these navigator controls. Uh, the navigator controls provide interaction to the end users and they allow the end users to select, uh, to filter the data that is being shown by the other controls. One of uh, Time Navigator is one such control and it allows the end user to select a time range for which the data will be shown by the other visual controls. Uh, its options are uh, which levels of uh, time user will be allowed to zoom in uh, to select, as well as um, the time range presets, which are the buttons, very popular on mob mobile devices. Uh, another navigator is a selection list. A selection list uh, can bind to a data column and it allows the user to select an individual entry from there. So for example, if dealing with products, you can bind it to the product data column. It'll show all the unique products from, you know, from the data set and allow the user to select each one uh, to show how the data relates for, uh, to that product individually. Um, a selection list can work off a list or a tree-based um, structure. So if you have hierarchical data, you can show it with a selection list. Once we have completed the layout of, the, of our dashboard, we can um, choose an appropriate color palette for it. DataZen will build a custom color palette for all of our clients, uh, and this is where you can have your company's logo as well as background and colors uh, show up in the, in the dashboard. Uh, once the color is chosen, you can also choose to set a mobile view for, um, for this dashboard. Basically, through our years of experience, what we have found out is that once you design a dashboard for a computer screen or a tablet or a large display area, they usually don't end up working well on mobile phones. So what we give you here is a chance to create an alternate layout for the phone. We give you all the controls you have used in your dashboard, uh, but you can choose to lay them out differently. So for example, we may want to have this time navigator here, and the selection list. Perhaps we don't want it to take all this space, but we want it to maybe give it just one row and it'll work like a drop-down combo box. And perhaps maybe we just want to show the chart and not the, not the gauge. And there you go, in less than a minute, we have a mobile view. Back to our uh, master view. So we have basically created our master view, uh, set some visual properties here, and it's time to move on to the, to the data view. 
Uh, this is where we, in the data view, this is where we import the data that is going to be used by this uh, chart, uh, by this dashboard, as well as connect it to all of our controls. We will start off by clicking on Add Data. If you have a data and server connection, you can connect to a server and import uh, one or more server-based data sources, or you can just get a local Excel file and uh, get data from there. Uh, you can also mix and match data sources uh, and use as many as you want uh, inside uh, your dashboard. So we have imported this main table here, which has a date column, uh, an industry breakdown, and has a bunch of uh, product metrics. So the idea here is that we will go through all of our controls and connect them to, the, to this data. We'll start off with the time navigator. And the first uh, field we always configure is, uh, is what uh, data table the data will come for, uh, from for this control. Right now, we have only one uh, uh, data table with a daytime column, so that's why it's easy to select. Um, time Navigator automatically recognizes the date time column here, so that does not have to be configured and we can just choose what um, value will be shown inside the time navigators chart. We'll leave it as a product A1. Now the selection list. Let's say we want our end user to be able to select the industry uh, in, this, um, uh, in this selection list. So again, we'll say our data comes from the main table. And in the selection list, we have two fields to configure here. One is for the keys and one is for the labels. The reason for this is because uh, when dealing with um, databases, often the, uh, the field, the label that you want to show to the end user is not the unique identifier of this column. So we give you a chance to set a different fields for the keys, which is the unique identifier and will be used across multiple tables for filtering. And a label which will be used for uh, displaying the actual value to the end user. In our case here, we can just choose the uh, industry for both the keys and the labels. And once we do that, we can choose which tables we want to filter based on this user selection. Again, right now we're only working with the main table and uh, we'll choose to filter it based on the industry uh, selected by the end user. So we move on to the radial gauge. The radial gauge has two values to configure, a main value and a comparison value. Uh, if we click, again, we'll say the main value comes from the main table, and again, we'll say product A1. Comparison value, again, comes from the main table, and we'll use A1 targets for the comparison. Now, if I click here on options, I'm given options to um, filter the data shown by this radial gauge. Basically, DataZen recognizes that the data source we're using here, the main table Excel spreadsheet, already has two uh, navigators configured uh, to filter it. And this is the time navigator and the selection list which is configured. So basically, it is allowing us to filter the data shown by the gauge with these two navigators. So by selecting both of these, what we are saying is we want the gauge to only uh, take into account the data within the time range selected by the time navigator and only for the industry selected by the selection list. And again, you have then multiple aggregation options to, uh, for the returned records. So we'll do the same thing for both the uh, main value and the comparison value, and basically we're done configuring the gauge. We move on to the comparison time chart. Again, it's a comparison chart, so it takes has a main series and, um, and a comparison series. We'll say both of these come from the main table. We'll use A1 targets uh, here for the comparison and product A1 for the main series. And again, in options, we want the chart to reflect the, uh, the time navigator selection and the selection list selection. So we'll leave that as checked. And we can uh, 
at any time just click on run preview to see what our dashboard looks like and basically we'll try it out by making a selection on the time navigator and we notice that the chart uh, changes uh, likewise if we make a selection a different selection um, if we zoom into the time range make a different selection both the gauge and the time chart will uh, sh will reflect the selection likewise if we change an in the industry we are working with both controls will update to show uh, to show the data for that industry uh, and likewise uh, here uh, beside the title uh, is where you can see the user selection so we have selected June 2011 to May 2012 and the industry we have selected is healthcare so that is the designer process in a nutshell. Uh, you have many more controls here to play with and uh, each one of them has its own purpose and had, hence its own settings here, but the principle will be the same. You put some controls on the design surface, you set some visual properties, you go onto the data view, you connect each control to the, uh, to, to the data, and then in the dashboard settings you can set some um, properties uh, here such as culture, fiscal year start, date of year start and then with one click of a button you can publish this uh, this to a server and within minutes it will be available to all the users who have permissions to see this.